Hey everybody, welcome back to another adventure where I take something old and busted and turn it into something that's not so busted anymore, but equally just as old. <laughs> uh, I'm sure everybody remembers the Alienware case that I got. Um, man, it's been like, I don't know, well over a year. Uh, I just looked it up and it's been almost two years. So it was about time that I picked this thing up off the floor and did something with it. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a system. I'm gonna build kind of a retro system. Um, is socket 775 retro by now? Yeah, let's call it retro. So I'm gonna build it uh, using my EVGA 750i motherboard. Uh, this has been featured in a couple of videos of mine now, and I think it's about time that it got a permanent home inside the Alienware, because I feel like this is a pretty good match for what was in there from the factory. And on top of that, I think I'm going to install an OS that is equally appropriate for the time period. This came uh, factory with Windows Vista. I don't have... I don't have the install disk for Windows Vista and I don't really feel like downloading one, but I do have Windows 7 and I feel like Windows 7 is kind of a good worthwhile upgrade for any system with Windows Vista on it. Not that Vista was terrible, I mean there was certainly worse Windows versions, but I feel like 7 is better and um, that might be a topic for another video, but 7 is what's going on here. This is just going to be kind of a quick build, a little bit of a fun, you know, sit down, relax, maybe grab a hot or cold beverage. So let's talk for a second about the build we're going to do. I mentioned the EVGA 750i, 780i SLI, that's, a, that's kind of a tough one to say. Um, I believe that this had a 750i motherboard when it left the Alienware factory. Um, that motherboard is long gone and I have checked on eBay and stuff like that. Uh, the prices on these are way higher than I care about being <laughs> uh, period correct on it. So we're going to use the 780i. We're going to chuck my Q9550 socket 775 CPU in there. We're going to pair that with 8 gigs of nothing fancy DDR2 RAM. And then I would really like to run SLI graphics cards in here. And I have a pair of GTX 260s that I think would be great in there. Um, these things are kind of a, they're kind of beastly. And um, they're not exactly the best, you know, for cooling. They're, they're huge. But hopefully this case will have enough airflow for us to be able to pull this off. Um, one can hope. I hope. Maybe you hope. I hope you hope. And then for cooling the CPU on this, because we might try overclocking this thing. I'd, I'd like to see it sitting around like maybe like 3.2 gigahertz. I feel like that's a pretty good speed for it. I want to cool it off and I could just put, you know, your, your run of the mill uh, Hyper 212 Evo on it or really I've got tons of adequate coolers for 775. I found this at the resale shop. Let me go ahead and bump the camera. It's an Arctic Pro, uh, well, Arctic Freezer Pro 7 AC. And I've seen these in a lot of videos on YouTube whenever I look up uh, Saka 775 stuff. And so I, I've never personally used one because I never actually built a 775 system of my own. So I'm gonna give this one a go and see how well it uh, can handle a little bit of overclocking. And of course, if it can't handle it, I have more stuff. I could water cool the thing if I wanted to. But uh, I do, I like air. I like air cooling for a number of reasons. And this case really doesn't lend itself to um, water cooling. I suppose we could do, you know, like a 120 millimeter radiator there. But um, it came factory with air cooling and I'd like to continue that trend.
and after a little bit of work there we go not uh not brand new looking but pretty good good enough so let's chuck it on the board and keep on keeping on Oh, you booger. Yeah. All right, I'm probably gonna install this off of camera because if you look at the, um, for lack of a better word, uh, tabs on here, go ahead and focus camera. They're kind of spread apart and that's gonna make it real difficult to install. And I'm probably gonna say some non YouTube friendly words. So I will see you when this is installed. Well, that was certainly more difficult than it needed to be. Um, I imagine this thing has been on and off a, a couple of computers. <laughs> so what I had to do, like I said, those the little tabs down here are flexed apart way more than they really should be. So I had to like one at a time go edit with a screwdriver and as I'm trying to push it in, poke the little legs together, the little tabs together um, in an effort to get it to go into the, the mounting holes and we've done it. Commencing with the insertage of the motherboard. That wire, get out of the way. There we go, perfect fit. So even though these are two different brands, EVGA and a um, NVIDIA branded card, they both are running the same BIOSes and have all the same identifying numbers and um, models. So, well, let's go ahead and do that. So I, I feel like they're gonna be compatible. Uh, older graphics cards are not so forgiving when you do them in SLI versus newer ones where as long as they're the same chipset, they'll work. Well, not every time, but you have a better chance. Man, that's a heavy card. And I think those wires fit, but God, look, there is no room between these two cards. I don't know if they're gonna be able to cool themselves off. I mean, this one definitely will be able to. Uh, our top EVGA one, Whew, that's not gonna be happy. Not at all. Maybe I can move it down to the, to the other slide. Oh. <laughs> you got to take this one out to get this one out because I can't reach the little PCI Express re release. I can feel that it's running into it. Oh man, that's disappointing. Oh, wait. I'm stuck on. Oh god, pull that. Future me, go ahead and edit this so I don't look incompetent. Please and thank you. No, don't catch that player. I feel like we're still running into something down there.
Maybe we're just barely touching. No, 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 there's, there's room. There's room. Got it, there's room. So I don't have all of the wires run yet, uh, but as you can see, it's already kind of a rat's nest that I, I kind of predicted earlier, but it's not too bad. That's not too bad. So the next thing I want to tackle is I want to do our hard drives and I could just throw an SSD in there or something like that, but I, I feel like that's not very um, period specific. So I think what I'm going to do, no, don't fall. I think what I'm going to do, well, I know what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some RAID 500 gigabyte Seagate drives, a couple of Barracudas, excuse the light, but it's getting dark. Um, I think this is going to be more than fast enough for what I've got planned for this computer. And basically it's, it's, what else do I do with these things? I play games. You could get this computer set up, uh, from the factory with dual, um, I don't know if they were fast or like 10,000 RPM hard drives, but like I said, these are two 7,200 RPM, 500 gigabyte matched hard drives, and it should work very well in a RAID setup. So I'm gonna throw these in there real quickly, and I will see you when I'm done with those. So I've got everything hooked up. I'm not particularly proud of the way the wiring is run, but it is what it is, especially in a case like this. So I'll, I'll probably touch things up later. I still have to get the side panels on, but I really want to make sure that it boots up and I want to make sure all my fans are spinning and everything is working according to plan. So let us see what happens. Oh wait, I had better turn the power supply on. I'm not gonna get far without it. Lights and go. Oh. A fan is spinning, it's not making terrible noises. All of these fans are spinning. And we got a post. While Windows 7 was installing, I noticed that the fan on the side panel wasn't spinning. And then I took a look here and I noticed there was a burnt trace. So I just stuck a small bodge wire on there. Which you can, there you go, yeah, you can see that. And now we're gonna check and see if it works. I hope it does. So the way the side panel works, um, you got your uh, side panel fan, and it plugs into this little PCB here, along with the LED wire. And they just use these little um, pads here that push up against these little spring-loaded clips. This one, when I got it, of course, was all broken up. They were all kinds of uh, bent and twisted, and I imagine the left one touched the second one and caused that short to burn out, who knows? But I've tested these all with multimeters and um, they all have continuity to their respective, um, I don't know what you call these, but uh, none of them connect to each other anymore. So hopefully now we don't burn it up again. And we click power. Hey, I didn't even need a flashlight for that. That works. Nice. Because I could not find one of those um, small circuit boards on eBay to save my life. So we had to make a repair. And we finally got the whole system put together. I kind of buttoned up everything that I wanted to address. About the only thing I can't really address are these scuff marks on it. I've tried a couple of methods um, around the case and it just leads to a dull finish. So I'm sure it could be like plastic polished out, but I'm not gonna spend that kind of a time on it. Maybe later, but um, basically I got everything working on this that I wanted. Our side LED works, our side fan now works because we replaced or we um, fixed that trace on the PCB down there. Our front USBs work. Uh, I had to replace this one in a previous video if you remember. Now all of this works, all the LEDs. Our hard drive activity light works. About the only thing on this system that doesn't work is this LED right here, the little, you know, sort of like the other side, the halo around it and the eyeballs are supposed to light up, but they just don't. And I don't know if that's important enough for me to tear apart the little LED and see if I can't find something to fix. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. And maybe one day I'll find 
the drive blanks for right here. Um, case I don't believe came with them or I lost them somewhere along the way. Hope that's not the case. <laughs> um, but one of these days maybe. So let's go over a few things that you'll need to, like if you're building a Windows 7 system of this vintage, you know, using SLI and stuff like that. A couple of things you're gonna have to set up through Windows to get um, a good user experience. So first and foremost, when you start the computer up and the drivers recognize that you have two um, graphics cards in it, two GPUs, you're gonna need to come into your, whoops, into your control panel, the NVIDIA control panel. I unfortunately don't know what it's going to require if you have like an ATI card, but um, in NVIDIA, we have to come into configure SLI surround physics and off the bat, it's gonna be set up for disable SLI. You of course don't want that because well, you bought two cards and you want two cards to work. So let's go ahead and click maximize 3D performance. And the cool part about this is it's a software uh, setting, like a switch, and we don't have to restart the computer. We don't have to do anything. It's just gonna work, usually. <laughs> so here we are. So now we have SLI enabled. And another thing you're gonna wanna do, and I don't know, this might just be personal preference or I don't know, a lot of people, um, like the early SLI days, you would get a lot of like micro stuttering. And basically what that is, is really inconsistent frame times. You might be getting 60 frames a second, but like 15 of those frames might have taken 30 milliseconds to, to render and the rest of them took five seconds, five milliseconds to render. And you'll get, yeah, a really nice frame rate, but it'll be very inconsistent and jittery. So um, one thing I've learned is if you take triple buffering and force that on in the global settings, it's gonna reduce it a lot. It's not gonna remove it, but it makes it so much better, at least to me. Your mileage also may vary, who knows. Um, and then the last thing you're gonna need to do is for Windows Update. So. When you try to run Windows Update, you're going to get this error code, um, eight. And of course, let me let me retract that. My copy of Windows Seven is old. It's it's older than Surface Pack One. It was I bought it when it was basically only a couple of weeks old. So when I reinstalled Windows Seven, we end up with this error code. 80072 EFE and everything you find on the Microsoft website is going to lead you in circles and and it's the Microsoft answers website never gives me any answers anywho huh it's because Microsoft has updated their um, update system for lack of a better word and you need the files to go with it and unfortunately the Windows update will not give you those um, files that it wants so you need these three, and I'm gonna put their numbers down in the description, but you need these three manual updates and they are all available through Microsoft's website to download. And you need to install these three, but you can't install them unless you have Service Pack 1. So Microsoft's website also, you know, uh, is still hosting the Service Pack 1 update. You could probably find Service Pack 3, which would negate probably all of this. This is the way I found it, and it worked for me. Um, like I said, though, you, your copy might have Service Pack 1 already installed, or Service Pack 2, or 3, or 9, or whatever they're up to. I'm sure it's only 3. <laughs> but you'll have to run the Service Pack install, and the Service Pack install takes like an hour to do, maybe even longer. And then you can come back and install these three minor updates, which I think the biggest one is 55 megabytes. And then Windows Update will work as you know designed, as expected. You're gonna to need to do that because you need the .NET packages to run certain softwares. Uh, I ran into my first snag when I tried to run 3 Mark 2011. It just would not let me. I kept getting an error about um, timestamps or, or something like that being incorrect, but updating to Service Pack 1 fixed all that. So enough of all that uh, talking in mumbo jumbo here. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put uh, in the description the updates that I use to get my pre-Service Pack 1 
copy of Windows 7 working with Microsoft Update. And that way you can run any software that requires updates, you know, to Windows. So, so I think the first thing we're gonna do is test the thermals of this case, which is also gonna test the thermals of that Arctic Cool uh, Freezer Pro 7. So after running Vantage, I took a look into the CPU ID and uh, hardware monitor, and I noticed that one of the cards are getting a little bit toasty. 105 degrees is about 20 degrees higher than I ever like to see them get. So might have to take it apart um, for its own good. And so I think we're gonna call it there for this video. I uh, need to tear that card apart for its own safety. 105 is a little bit too toasty. <laughs> um, so. Like I said, for the safety of it, we're gonna call it quits here. I'm gonna tear it all down, clean everything up uh, as far as the video cards are concerned. And then we can come back with another video and test this thing out truly. So we have, you know, short of those, the cards having heat issues, uh, restored this thing sort of to its former glory. So all the parts that we've put into this um, are very close in spec to what it could come with from the factory. So you could get these spec'd out with a Core 2 Extreme QX 9650. Our Q9550 is slightly slower. Not really that much of a difference. Um, the motherboard would have been an N4 750i motherboard. And we have a 780i, which is going to be a little bit of a step up. You could get it with dual ATI Radeon HD 4870s or you could get it with dual GTX 280s. So the 260 definitely performs a little bit less than the 280, well, a lot bit less than the 280. Um, but it's what I had on hand. And we have eight gigabytes of DDR2 memory in there. So we're probably matched spec for spec on that. And then it would have had Windows Vista 64 on there. I have Windows 7 64. We've spec'd it out very closely. It, it is a bummer that I couldn't run all my tests today, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to cook those heart, those GPUs. So we're gonna call it quits there. Uh, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. I appreciate it either way. And I will see you in the next time. And the next time you see this machine, we might. Well, the next time you see this machine, we're definitely gonna get that heat issue under control, and run some games, run the rest of those benchmarks. I probably want to really show those benchmarks in this. So, and then we might look at upgrading it a little bit. I, as, as cool as SLI is in this rig, the cards aren't, you know, it's a, it's a GTX 260, it's, it's not exciting. And they use a ton of power, create a ton of heat, make a ton of noise. And, well, I've had this little guy sitting around for a while and it's, you know, it's a GTX 650 Ti. But I mean, this card by itself, this little budget card, is way faster, well, should be way faster than two GTX 260s in SLI. So maybe we'll give that a try. But I mean, the purity of it, I mean, like, it's supposed to have SLI, it's an Alienware, you know, Area 51. But maybe if we can get away from the purity aspect of it, we can throw something a little bit better in there and have a better sort of experience with it. So, anyways, see you next time.